Okay, we are in uh, chapter four now. We're going to start with section 4.1, position, velocity, and acceleration vectors. Uh, let's share the um, PowerPoint. And uh, so if you look at the photos that they they have, you should see something in, in common with all of them. Uh, it sparks, sparks flying off of somebody uh, using an arc welder, probably uh, water coming out of a water fountain, uh, a water fountain, a colored water fountain, and then uh, a young man jumping off a cliff um, into the water. Uh, they all show a, a parabola. You can see a, a parabola in each of them. It's hardest to see in the the young man jumping off a cliff, uh, but but his path is is following a parabola the um this is common projectile motion and that it's uh motion in two dimensions you in the horizontal dimension you most likely have no acceleration but in the vertical direction you always have gravitational acceleration and so you will have an object go up slow down slowed down by the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared and then accelerates downward. Well, it, it increases in velocity downward because of the gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. It's a key point to always remember that gravitational acceleration is always present in these types of problems. Don't be feel, fooled by a question that says at the top of a parabola, the, the vertical velocity I mean, the vertical acceleration is zero. No, the vertical acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second. The vertical velocity is zero and changing direction, but the acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared. So, um, uh, and and I've got I've got some recommended videos at the end of the module to look at. One is on on um, uh, define separating the vertical and the horizontal components. And the other is is uh, the um, I don't remember if I have the shooting the monkey um, demonstration. No monkeys were hurt. It's they're using the stuffed monkey. That may be uh, I think that's in this chapter. Um, and we're gonna in in lieu of doing section four point six relative velocity and relative acceleration, I'm gonna show you a little video that I think is a, a little more instructive. Than, than what you get in, in the, uh, the section from the book. Uh, so we're gonna skip 4.6. We're, we're only gonna have five sections in this, uh, in this module. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, here's a position vector. The displacement of the particle is the vector uh, delta r. Now you can see the r, r initial is, is a uh, vector right here to the upper, uh, upper left and then below it is uh, our final now those are two vectors emanating from the origin and going in a kind of if we want to say a uh, a northeasterly direction um, but if you look at the difference vector the delta r uh, it's more of a uh, east southeast easterly direction uh, and that's that's the difference that's delta r so delta R is equal to R final minus R initial. Uh, if you were to take uh, um, R final and uh, add the negative of R initial, you would uh, you would generate the the delta R. As a matter of fact, uh, to to see if you're watching these videos, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it an extra. Uh, extra credit if you can reconstruct this ri the, if you can reconstruct r final minus r initial in other words head to tail put the the t the negative of ri put it um, in the negative direction and see if you come up with the uh, the delta r so uh, if you've watched this video you'll know to do the assignment you have trouble understanding what I want, you're welcome to contact me, but I won't say anything further uh, about it other than this video. All right, let's go uh, to the next one, velocity vector. 
Okay, we have, you can see that uh, as delta R1, just as we, when we were looking in the linear, um, uh, it, well, it wasn't a linear case. I mean, when we were looking at, uh, at the uh, velocity, uh, position, velocity, and acceleration vectors over time, uh, we, were, we were doing this uh, derivative. And now we're doing it, but instead of uh, position versus time, we have x position and y position. And we can see that as we decrease the uh, delta r vector, we come up with the uh, direction of the velocity at point A. Um, so as the end point of the path is moved from B to B prime to B double prime, the respective displacements and corresponding time intervals become smaller and smaller. At the end, as the end, pro, the end point approaches A, delta T approaches zero and the direction of delta R approaches that of the green line tangent to the curve at, at A. So the average velocity, the average velocity vector is defined as the uh, p position vector, the change in position vector divided by uh, the delta t. So as delta t decreases, of course, we can't let it get to zero because what happens if it gets if it gets to zero? That's undefined. So we use the limit. Uh, delta v, v is equal to the limit of delta r, the position vector, divided by delta t time as delta t approaches zero. So that's the derivative uh, dr dt. Uh, so this, the, uh, as you decrease delta r, you'll get the uh, slope of the velocity, which is the slope of the, uh, the line there uh, at position a. Uh, so uh, the speed, the, the magnitude, the absolute value sign there around the delta uh, v vector or the v vector excuse me not delta v the v vector is just the the velocity the magnitude of the velocity where you don't take into consideration the the direction okay the acceleration vector now just as uh, now if we look at at the uh how velocity changes uh, you can see v final minus v initial is delta v uh, so the average velocity is the change, uh, I'm sorry, the average acceleration, the average acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over the time period involved. So V final minus V initial divided by T final minus T initial. And as delta T approaches zero, uh, you don't want to get there because you'll have infinity. So the acceleration is equal to the the instantaneous acceleration is equal to the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta v over delta t, and that's simply dv dt. Um, and so we're still talking about the same thing. The velocity is the uh, time derivative of uh, position, and acceleration is the time uh, derivative of, uh, of velocity, yeah, or the... Uh, it, it, the second derivative of position. Okay, uh, consider the following controls in an automobile. Um, the, the gas pedal, uh, the brake, the steering wheel. What are the controls in this list that cause an acceleration of the car? Okay, now what is an acceleration? An acceleration can be uh, an increase or decrease in speed or a change in direction. Uh, since velocity has speed and direction, uh, a change in any of those, a change in speed, either increase or decrease, or a change in direction will be an acceleration. So the gas pedal, typically you push on the gas pedal to increase your speed or at least maintain it. But if you increase your speed, you're accelerating. If you brake, you're slowing down. So that's an acceleration. We we consider it in in common language, we call it a deceleration, but it's an acceleration. It's just an, an acceleration in the negative direction or the steering wheel where you're changing the direction. So 
is it only the gas pedal and the brake? Only the brake, only the gas pedal, or only the steering wheel? And it should be obvious that really all three controls, the gas pedal can increase the, acceler increase the acceleration, the brake causes an acceleration in the negative direction, and the steering, steering wheel changes your direction. So all three controls, uh, in, a, in a manner of speaking, are accelerators. They will cause an acceleration. Okay, and I think that's the end. Of, uh, we'll stop there, and we'll pick up the next section on the next uh, bit of lecture.